My name is Nan. I'm currently also an urban planning student, graduate student at SJSU. I was actually part of last year's class where we examined the COVID-19 impacts and concerns of the Alum Rock Business Corridor. So this year I am very proud and excited to be part of Community University um, as a project coordinator alongside of Melda for the Vegilution project regarding their new sofa pocket park in downtown San Jose. Um, which you see here is shown. Uh, the before and after, you can see that it was once an abandoned lot that was completely revitalized to serve the community so much more effectively. It hosts an urban garden, which is pictured above on the right side. And what isn't shown is the dog park, which is further to the on the right side of that park there as well. Um, so to get started, I'm going to give you all some context and background information about the goals of this project. And then we'll get into the details of what we did to achieve these goals. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so Vegilution has partnered with Community University to bring awareness to Sofa Pocket Park by connecting with the local communities in downtown. Uh, as part of our outreach, what we wanted to do was understand the community's relationship with parks and to do so we wanted to gather the perspectives and feedback about the open green space. Um, and the needs of the community, like whether or not there is enough open and green space, and if there are, are they satisfied with the amenities that are offered at these spaces? Um, and we also wanted to gather perspective and feedback from the community of the new Sofa Pocket Park as well, such as how they get to the park, do they even know about the park, and if they don't or haven't visited, um, we want to investigate reasons as to why and if we can mitigate that. And a lot of these tasks and goals could not have been achieved without our partners, which obviously include uh, Vegilution, the surrounding neighborhood associations, our urban planning capstone class, uh, MTI, which is Mineta Transportation Institute, San Jose Downtown Association, Coral at Spartan Keys and Healing Grove. Next slide, please. So part of our research uh, or the research involved prior to data collection, students from the capstone, the SJSU students from the capstone class met with Vegilution and their team at the urban farm to grasp a full understanding of the organization's goals and achievements. Uh, there is an extreme emphasis on the importance of providing access to food resources, especially to communities designated as food deserts or are food insecure. During the same tour, the graduate students also visited the Sofa Pocket Park, which you see again on the right, for the first time as a class, where they met with more Vegilution staff, as well as San, San Jose Downtown Association. The students learned at this tour the history of the Pocket Park, what it was before, as we saw a few slides ago, and how it was taken by the San Jose Downtown Association and redesigned and revitalized to make it what it is today in partnership with Vegilution. Um, and they use it again to host the urban demonstration garden, farm stand, dog park, and sometimes they even use it for a mobile food vending hub. It also features murals that are uh, designed and created by local artists. Next slide, please. This brings us to the neighborhood tours, which included the South University neighborhood where Walter Sonner was able to walk us through the area and Guadalupe Washington neighborhood where the students met with Rosalinda Aguilar and Ray Moreno. These walkthroughs gave students the opportunity to identify community assets, opportunities, and learn about each neighborhood's historic background, which allowed them to intimately visualize the community needs. Um, this provides a lot of insight for the students to implement methods that would allow them to effectively engage with the community based on their needs, such as language barriers. Uh, something one of our tour guides, Rosa Linda, who resides in Guadalupe, Washington neighborhood, uh, had mentioned, which I'd like you all to keep in mind, is that she did not, she does not visit the Sofa Pocket Park. Um, she knows of the park and knows where it is, but the true the path of her for her to get to that park is pretty daunting. And she avoids it because First Street is quite heavy in traffic and very unfriendly for pedestrians, but this would be the best route to get to the park from the Guadalupe, Washington neighborhood. Um, and as winter approaches, we get less daylight in the afternoon and the evening, as you know. So this makes that same unfriendly path even harder to travel on. She doesn't drive there because then she'd have to pay for parking and it's so close, it would just be somewhat lud ludicrous to drive and pay for parking when she can walk there. But again, the walk is cumbersome. 
Um, with that said, let's move on to the next slide and discuss our community outreach. So now we are at the community input survey where the students begin their data collection. The survey is meant to capture the voices that are not often heard. We are hoping that after hearing these perspectives that are so often neglected, this data would help Vegilution develop a community-driven space that can be shared by all people of the community under the guise of encouraging urban agriculture, especially in neighborhoods that lack the necessary resources and infrastructure to get access to healthy produce and food options. Uh, the QR code you see on the right side of the screen will take you directly to the survey, so please feel free to take some time to answer these questions and assist us even further with gathering feedback and thoughts on the park. In the meantime, let me tell you about the, uh, the survey itself, what you'll be taking when you scan the QR code. It comes in four parts. Each theme serves to capture the feedback that will satisfy the intended goals of this project. The first part aims to understand the community's general relationship with parks. The second aims to understand the community's relationship with the sofa pocket park specifically, like whether or not they've been there. Uh, the third part is about produce, that fruit and vegetable acquisition, because we wanted to understand if the community faces challenges acquiring healthy and affordable produce. This would impact a possible expansion of the urban garden. And the final part is demographics, so that we could better gauge who the community is and whose voices we are hearing. The survey itself consists of 48 questions, which sounds quite lengthy, and it can be, but when conducting the surveys in conversation rather than Q&A format, it's very seamless, very painless, and pretty speedy. Uh, with the 48 questions though, there are seven designated questions by the capstone class to use a mini version in case the students met with someone who had less time to converse in depth. The languages offered in the survey are English, Spanish, and Vietnamese. We even added a Mandarin section because one of the students who had visited the park on our many tours heard Mandarin speakers visiting the dog park, so we felt it might be helpful to include that. Next slide, please. All right, for community outreach, we partnered with Mineta Transportation Institute to develop a flyer that would advertise the park, the survey, and the open major house, uh, the major open house events on October 22nd and the 29th. The flyers were developed in three languages, English, Spanish, and Vietnamese, um, as you see here. To spread the word about these events, though, we, dis we distributed to the flyers to several locations, including neighborhood associations, local elementary schools, including Lowell, um, Lowell Horseman, Allender, and Washington. We also reached out to Rocket Ship, Rocket Ship Mateo Shidi, and then obviously the high school that's right across from the the park, which is Notre Dame, the all girls high school. Um, fun fact for October 29th, we, we were able to gather Coral, the after school program at Washington Elementary. They had booked a trip, a field trip with us for October 29th, about a month in advance for one of the, the major open house events, um, which I'll discuss further in detail in a moment. So we basically built the event to accommodate this particular focus group, which is which would have been K to 12 children. Um, but unfortunately, the week before the event, the school had to pull out um, and we no longer had a designated audience. So that uh, incentivized us to double down on our outreach, which is why we then had to meet with Healing Grove and the community that gathered there, which typically happens on Thursdays. Uh, we were able to talk about the park with them, as well as conduct surveys with all the attendees. It was really wonderful. They all spoke Spanish, so Imelda assisted me with that part. Um, and if you aren't familiar with Healing Grove, it's this really wonderful health clinic that also serves as a religious and cultural safe space for underserved residents of that community. It's right on Alma. We also set up a small stand at the Brenda Lopez Plaza so that we could capture the parents' Uh, waiting for their kids to come out of school, which would have been the Washington Elementary School. So we, we had to expand our outreach, but luckily we were able to reach out to Coral at Spartan Keys as well, who kindly agreed to come to our James Rojas event on October 22nd. So let's get into that and how that transpired in the next slide. All right, so for our open house events, which held again on October 22nd and the 29th, we set up at the Sofa Pocket Park, naturally. 
Uh, the October 22nd, the event began at 4 p.m. with James Rojas. If you aren't familiar with him or his work, he is a brilliant urban planner, artist, and activist who uses art making as a method of community engagement. Um, in his activity for the 22nd, which is called Place It, it's a place making activity which he has practiced in many communities. He implores people of all ages, but particularly the, the youth that attended from Spartan Keys, uh, to use found objects such as toys to create their ideal park. So they, they just gathered toys and objects to realize their imagination, which spanned from dinosaur parks to Christmas parks. A lot of the kids were able to really activate their imagination and creativity. You could tell because the laughter and the excitement could be heard from outside the park. And MTI, Mineta Transportation Institute, offered a poster making activity, which most of the kids utilized to draw and color their perfect greenscape, like the gardens that they created during the placemaking activity. Um, and Veggie Lucian also provided master gardeners, which piqued their interest in horticulture. And at these activities, the children would be able to build their own pot of succulents or plant their own seeds of choice. Uh, and then October 29th, we had two parts to that event. First, we stationed at the downtown San Jose Farmer's Market from 10 to 2 p.m., garnering as much attention as we could to the park, which was really easy to do because we could just point to it from a block away because the, the Farmer's Market is a street down. Um, and people were really engaged and excited because they either didn't realize that there was a park there or they didn't realize it was open to the public. And a lot of families with their children were present at this market because it was a Halloween weekend. So we were able to engage with a lot of children. Uh, the second part took place again at the Sofa Pocket Park after the farmer's market. So that started from three to 6 p.m. Attendance was somewhat fewer this time because again, we lost, the, lost out on the Coral Washington students, but we still held the same activities as we did on October 22nd um, with an additional poetry slam session at the end. So some of the parents at the Healing Grove event, which I mentioned earlier that we expanded our outreach to, were able to show up and um, bring their children as well. And then I think the crowd, that the small crowd that was accruing allowed people to um, also join in. So despite the low attendance, we still had a few people come through the space. We also had two unhoused residents come by, which was magnificent because we received pretty kind feedback from them. One of them, her name is Rose, specifically said that she was really happy this park existed because it was a huge break from the urban scape that exists everywhere else. And she felt like this place was an escape for her, a true place of rest. So this, this would suggest that the park is doing so far what it's intended to do, um, hold space for the community to gather and escape from the harsh environment of the urban landscape. Next slide, please. All right, so this slide captures a very meaningful thought from James Rojas. He's the urban planner, again, that hosted our, the placemaking activity on our first open house event. And he said it was inspiring to collaborate with Latino youth to design their ideal park using an assortment of objects. Hearing them describe it in public was satisfying. When I was their age, I was shy. This, was, this is where equity begins. The youth created a bike swing, flowers, fountains, tunnels, and elements to engage all of their senses as teens. They created two parks, the Everything Park and the Christmas Park that always had a Christmas tree with presents. Youth are our most vulnerable and yet the most creative thinkers in our communities. They process the environment at an early age. They think with their imagination and senses. Youth saw this as an opportunity to create their ideal community. And overall, James believes in our, in our youth and so do we at Come University. They are free of the constraints that limit their imagination and creativity, which allows them to think freely and speak their minds and that's how that really is how equity begins, allowing the smallest voices to be heard and realized. Next slide, please. Here are some results we can share with you thus far. A note to remember though, that the data collection is not completed until mid-November. So these results are just year to date. Uh, students have confirmed a total of 104 surveys thus far, at least. 
They've collected a total of 69 paper surveys. The rest being 35 are online, which was accessed through the QR code. Only English and Spanish surveys were received with 21 of them being in Spanish and the rest in English. The following questions were highlighted in our findings because they are they pertain a great deal to the attendance of the Pocket Park. And the questions are, do you know where the Sofa Pocket Park is? A little less than half, 37% uh, of respondents said they did not know what it was. Of the group that did know what it was, they, they did know where it was, so that's good. Um, we then asked the community if they, if they feel the area around the Pocket Park is safe, and 49% agreed. Um, 35 to six and six, 35 percent felt neutral and 16 percent disagreed. So, so despite that being less than the 49, I think it, it's something to consider as well. Uh, we then asked, we also asked the community if they felt safe traveling to the park, which is why I'd like to to recall Rosalinda's perspective of this experience. 65 percent said yes they did feel safe traveling to the park, although the remaining 35% said they felt neutral or they disagreed. This is somewhat a large number to remain undecided or feel safe. This could somewhat contribute to the reduction of visitation as well. And to um, refer back to Rosalinda's perspective that she doesn't travel there. So it would even, um, it could even be considered that the 65% who feel safe traveling there um, and maybe walk there are not included by the Guadalupe Washington neighborhood. Um, then we also asked people how they traveled to the park. And um, again, 55% walked and a very minute amount of the, of the respondents biked or used public transit and very few people um, have parking for bikes as well. So again, the, tra the, the travel to the park might be limited based on the population of which community we're, we're trying to refer to. Next slide, please. All right, so as we continue to broaden and re-engage the community for our outreach, we plan to conduct surveys at a few of the following events this month. Uh, there is the first Friday walk that happens every first Friday of the month. This one will be today from 5 to 9 p.m. This somewhat coincides with the Veggie Lution activities that are happening every Friday as well, which take place 4 to 7 p.m. So that would be a great intersection of events. We also have Vive Calle on Sunday from 10 to 3 p.m. Both of these events take place in areas that will intersect the Sofa Pocket Park. So we believe this will be an optimal opportunity to highlight the Pocket Park and engage with the crowds to spread awareness and hopefully collect more data through the surveys. So please complete the survey yourself as well if you can. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, I will also be placing the link into the chat that you can share with anyone you know and you may utilize the QR code on the screen to pull it up faster. Um, but this concludes my update on our partnership with Vegilution as we continue to activate the Pocket Park. Thank you. Thank you, Nan. That's wonderful. And we appreciate you sharing all of the information and hopefully everyone will be able to fill out the survey. Um, speaking of surveying and community engagement, let's hear about the projects that will close out the semester. Uh, we have about five minutes left. Um, so I'm going to ask Mary Kay if she has any details that she would like to share with us. Yep, I'm going to try and keep it brief. All right. So again, we have uh, the sofa the sofa pocket park events. Come out to those. They're both this weekend. So both Art Walk and Viva Calle are this weekend, and Art Walk is today actually. Yeah, come out to it. Uh, and then there's Viva Calle, which is on Sunday, so uh, the seventh. And then there's Christmas tree decorating day. Um, District 3's Community Leadership Council will be having an ornament drive as well as a tree decorating day on November 22nd. More details can be found by scanning the QR code. Um, and then there are also November project dates, which are slightly different from the November events just because these aren't really open to the public. Um, but we have here 
Um, in my last couple of weeks, I actually learned about our partners and then um, the projects that we have. So the, there are six partners. Um, some of them include like Horace Mann, um, Ace Inspire Academy, and then like more. Um, and then the four projects. So some of those projects include Geology Rocks, Young Entrepreneurs Academy, Engineering in Action, and so forth. So um, there's that. And then these are just like a collection of all the dates of things going on. Uh, November 15 is a special date because Kong University will be reintroducing Science Day to Horace Mann Elementary. So again, November 15th. If you'd like more information, go ahead and contact us. Um, I'll go ahead and put the contact email in the chat. And that's all I have as far as the events. Great, Mary Kay, thank you so much. It sounds, that sounds wonderful. Um, okay, now I'd like to remind everybody to please follow and engage with community social media, and that will kind of help keep us all on track and being aware of all the activities. Uh, we have a couple extra minutes. We have a few minutes left for our meeting. Does anyone who may have additional information to share or any announcements that they'd like to make to the group? Now's your time. As we wait for people to kind of raise their hand, which I don't see, I saw a question from Colin Rickleman for Nan. Uh, do, for Nan, <laughs> do we know which genders feel more safe traveling to the park? Oh, there is a question about gender identification as well. Um, I we've not I've not gotten a chance to analyze that, but we'll definitely keep that in our next update um, as well. Okay, and then.